Welcome, Brilliante Music Festival, all my friends in Nagaland. I'm so excited to share with you. My name is Monica Hersick. I'm a jazz pianist. I also initially trained as a classical pianist and organist and then fell in love with this art form jazz. And this is something I want to share today um, about how to just approach basic improvisation and um, enjoy expressing yourself. So what we'll do today is we'll just look at uh, the blues form and some ideas on how to start improvising and how to start create some voicings. Um, I am originally from Germany, but I moved to the US 30 years ago. I got my doctorate from Indiana University. I'm on faculty there in the arts management program. Uh, but I'm also a touring jazz pianist. I have a group um, of all female uh, performers that's touring around the world. So hopefully we'll get to see you all in person sometimes. But um, what I thought we should start with is, um, you know, improvisation just means altering things. And it used to be a common practice so I, I thought I'm, I'm going <laughs> to play uh, one of the Bach preludes and just um, show you how you can simply embellish a little bit. And that's OK. That, that's part of the fun. So here's the one in B flat. <laughs> I'm sure you all practice your scales and your, you know, all that good stuff in arpeggio. So you're so ready to do this. And um, you should have, so I'm going to send ahead. I'll make sure there's a handout. So make sure you have this. It should be two pages. Um, one that looks like this. There's uh, two blues on there, um, centerpiece and C jam blues. And then the back side or the other side has a blue scale and some patterns and a bass line. 
and this is all the tools you need to get started and, and have just plain old fun. <laughs> and the way jazz works is usually you pick a, a, a tune, a song, a piece, can be anything, can be Bach, can be anything. And you use that um, to embellish. Now in the jazz format, usually when you hear groups perform, they will take one piece, it's kind of like building a pizza and that'll become the pizza crust. And then it'll be repeated over and over, just the basic format. And on top, everybody creates their own unique melodies. And, and that's the exciting part about this art form that's about the process where you can showcase in the moment, oh, look, my ideas and the things that I can come up with in the moment. And the blues form is probably the most basic format um, there is in jazz. There's the next one would be the AABA forms and the song forms. But the blues form is something we were all have heard or familiar with. It has, so I'll show you this, look at this C jam blues. It's usually 12 bars and it's usually built, see how it starts on the C7 chord. Then you get the F7 for two bars back to the C7, G7, C7. And it's a very familiar format when we start. And this is bar two. cool because the melody is one little riff that's three times repeated got that you can even play along with me I'll just do that three times on the form so first on the C chord one two one two three four expecting you to play the chords along at all yeah just just playing the melody along and realizing that it's very riff based it's the same little pattern just three times Now, let me show you, because we're talking piano and you, you want to add some of the chords. And um, the thing about learning jazz is, is to learn how to interpret those symbols, right? And it's important. So in, in the theory aspect is that we really need to learn what notes go into which chords and what the symbols mean. And that's something you can find in many resources. Um, Jamie Ebersold, A-E-B-E-R-S-O-L-D, uh, jazzbooks.com is a great resource on any jazz learning related materials. But um, basic theory meaning if it says C7, knowing that it's a C chord, C, E, G, and the seven is the flat seven, the B flat. Sounds like this, the dominant, the plain dominant chord. So that's what that C7 in here means. Now the thing is to figure out um, how to make a good voicing. We just don't, we don't want to just play C7, right?
right? That would be a little boring. <laughs> so um, the thing to do is we have to pick out the good notes in it. So the good notes um, meaning, okay, C, E, G, B flat, right? C, E, G, B flat is our notes. And um, the good notes meaning, hopefully we have a bass player with us and that bass player is gonna play the C. And we don't have to play the same thing that our bass player does. So we'll leave that to the bass player. Now the E, the third, so we have the root note, the third, the fifth, and the seventh. Root, third, fifth, seventh. Root note, we'll leave to the bass player. The third is really, 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 really important because if we don't know the third, <laughs> we don't know if it's a major chord or a minor chord or something else. So that E we need for sure. The fifth, the G, you know, listen to the chord with the G and without the G. And it doesn't really make a big difference so the G is kind of an option, that fifth. We can leave it, take it or leave it, but we can pick better notes later. So we'll leave it. <laughs> now the seventh, the B flat. If we leave that out, we don't know that it's a seventh chord. We really, really, really need the seventh. So the two essential notes, is the third and the seventh. And in the C7 case, that would be a E and a B flat. And that's all I need. It's called a shell voicing. That's all I need to point out to our ear, hey, this is a C7 chord, right? gives me all the framework I need to hear that C7. So let's do the same thing for an F7 chord. Think about for a minute what notes go into an F7 chord. See if you can find an F7 chord. F, major triad, and the flat seven, right? pick out the third and the seventh in that meaning the F is the root note leave it to the bass player the A is the third we really need it the C is the option we'll leave it and the E flat is the seventh we really need it so the A and E flat are the two notes we really need right All right, remember the two notes that were in the C7, the shells? It was the E, the e and the B flat. So in our F7 was the A and the E flat. Notice something? If you just scoot down one key, you get the E flat and the A the two notes, the third and the seventh from the F7 turned around, but doesn't matter, the same notes. So we can get there just by sliding down one key. Pretty cool, huh? And we need one more chord in there, right? G7. So take a minute, find the G7 chord. Major triad, G, B, D, and the F is the seventh, right? Got it? All right, see if you can pick out the third and the seventh from that. So root, 
third would be the B, fifth is the D, we'll leave it alone, and F. E and F, right? Got it? E and F. And notice something? Remember the E and the B flat was our C7 chord? And D, F and the B is just one key up. So here's the really, really cool thing to play the chords for this blues. For the C7, all we need is the E and the B flat. And then to get to the F7, we'll just slide down a key to the E flat and the A, and then back, E and B flat. And to get to the G7, all we do is go up a key, F and B, and then back. Try that with me. Let's play through the form for C7, 2 F7, 2 C7, 2 G7, 2 C7. Just look on the C Jam Blues um, chord chart. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, C7, 2, 3, 4. Now down to the F7, 2, back to the C7. Now up to the G7 and back to the C7. Let's do it one more time. One, two, three, four, C7. trying to be the bass player with my other hand <laughs> while well, we don't have a bass player right here right now so one one more time just to get used to it one two three four c7 You got some chords for the left hand now, and you can just use that with that melody that's only that same riff three times. One, two, three, four, F7. Back to C7. just by lining out the chords with those shells in our left hand we can give our ear the whole blues form we can hear it and we have it and our right hand is free to do the melodies and and work with it so let's try it one more time one two oh one two three four c seven To like hold <laughs> C7 for four beats. That's not what that chord symbol means. It just means I'm giving myself a little accent. I'm, I'm making sure I will keep the same amount of time when I'm playing all these four beats to a bar, but I don't have to line that out. I can line that out with my accents and knowing where I am on, on, on which beat when I'm doing it. And of course, if you have a drummer and a bass player, that'll make it much easier. Cool. All right, we got the tools, we got the chords. Now, what to do with the right hand? Where's this jazz coming in, right? This is kind of all right and fun and yay. But that's not what you signed up for, right? You're going, oh, I wanted to learn to improvise. <laughs> so
So let me show you something really cool about this blues form. And the cool thing is that you can um, use one scale. You can use one scale and you can use that scale for the whole form. That's why it's so, such a convenient thing. See that blue scale right here? It says blue scale. And look at the notes. It's the root note. Then it's the minor third. The fourth. The sharp fourth, the flat fifth, the fifth, and the seventh. So it's a really unique scale. It's not your basic major scale or not even any of the minor scales, any of them. It is a blue scale. One, minor third, fourth, sharp fourth, fifth, flat seven, and then we're back. another octave higher three four one and two and three and four and one and two and three right pretty cool and let's do it again and actually turn around and get back down to one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two down so um let's actually try to go one up and one down which gives us two two bars and let's see if we can fit this on the blues form and see how it sounds like so meaning you always get um two bars so we're, we're having our c7 one two three four one and two and three and four sounds just fine let's try it together I'll, I'll put the left hand if you know already the shouts you can do it too but you can try it sometime later and how they sound like and how they fit and it's kind of like learning a language right so 
I mean, you all obviously had to learn English to understand me or <laughs> have to figure it out. And in order to do that, you have to translate first, you know, each word from one language to the next language. You have to learn that this word means this in the other language and you learn it probably with flashcards and you just memorize the, the the words and then you have to figure out how to make sentences out of this and how to string those words together so they make sentences and then you have to learn how to talk the language and first you know you'll have a little accent, you'll sound a little foreign because you're learning the language and then more and more you go into it and you speak it with people and, and you engage in it and you listen to how it sounds like, the more you get fluent in it and you lose your accent and you sound natural. And, and that's the goal and, and that's kind of the process of learning jazz. So a lot of people think, oh yeah, I just know my scales. I know my chords. I'm ready to be a jazz person. <laughs> but not realizing that just like when you learned classical music, you had to learn the idiomatic differences, you know, how, how do you interpret Mozart versus Beethoven versus Bach? How do you play romantic? How do you play in the Baroque style? And, and similarly, um, when you learn to improvise or jazz, you learn how, what does bluesy stuff sound like? What's the common uh, type of patterns and words being used? What's the etiquette amongst the players? So it's, it's a process and we can't just assume just because we know how to do the technical stuff we also know the the oral stuff and the etiquette and the language so the best thing to do is to go listen and and listen to the language and pick out start picking out words and so that's why i gave you these blues patterns see the blues patterns <laughs> so get those blues patterns and what it means, this is just a few of the basic words and vocabulary, but something to get us started. That sounds good that it's jazzy language. So for example, the first one, if you look at number one, it goes one, two, three, four, one. One thing, notice how when I play the eighth notes, I'm not going. Meaning playing them straight and even, but I usually make the first one a little longer and the second one a little shorter, which is part of this jazz language. It's that part that makes it swing. Three, four. So let's let's try that a few times. Actually, let's let's try it all the way through a blues form. Meaning, I'm gonna gonna do my shells in the left hand through the form, but I'm just gonna repeat this pattern. And since it's a pattern that's four bars long, to fit it in the twelfth, I just have to repeat it three times. Ready? One, two. One, two, three, four. Here comes F7. Back to C7. And G7. Did you hear it? So it's the same same pattern that I did and it worked all the way through even though I was changing the harmonies because it's part of this blues scale and it's part of this what proven material that works so let's try it one more time one two one two three four <laughs> Hey, we 
got one word down. That's pretty cool. So let's try another word. Ready? So number two, look at it. Number two on the sheet right here. One, two, three, four. Try it over the form. One, two, one, two, three, four. And here comes an F sound. part of the vocabulary it's something that you would hear in a typical blues performance and that's why it works so now we got two patterns something to realize about the blues is that it's very riff based meaning just like the melody right that was mm -mm. three times this is actually even even more riff based than most of them. Most of the time, since we have those 12 bars organized in four bar segments, they're usually organized in, in question, question, answer segment. Meaning first you get, oh, I woke up this morning and I felt so blue. And then the second line will be usually repeat. And I woke up this morning and I felt so blue. And then the last line will be your answer. So I took a cup of coffee and it made me feel better. <laughs> so, so you get a resolution at the end. And um, so similarly, we can use now the two patterns that we learned and organize them in that way. Have a question, question, answer. So let's play pattern one, twice, and then answer with pattern two. So here's how it's gonna sound like one, two, one, two, three, four, one. <laughs> that work and, and could get done. So, um, and I was generous enough to put two more on there. So let's, let's explore number three and number four on here. You ready? So number three sounds two, three, four. <laughs> Try with me. One, two, three, four. Let's try this one over the whole form. So with the C7, the F7, and the C7. One, two, one, two, three, four. we're using the notes of the blues scale it sounds bluesy <laughs> and there's one more that I actually stole from a very famous rock piece a lot of the early uh, rock pieces are really steeped in the blues you know those early bands like um, uh, Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones they 
were all blues bands initially and then branched out and got a little more powerful. <laughs> but this one... <laughs> actually stolen from a band called Deep Purple <laughs> and it was their bass line that got very famous but it's all the notes off a blue scale so try that number four with me we'll, we'll do it on on the form one two three four <laughs> just to get started we can just play mix and match with them because they all work they're all good words to say so we can say something using those four patterns so here I'll, I'll show you how to kind of mix and match them together anytime they, they work so I'll start with number one one two three four <laughs> that if you look on the internet and you just look for blues play along this one is in the key of C uh, blues play along you find tons of them and you can just turn it on and it's usually a, a bass drum piano rhythm section and it's a great way to just experiment playing on it you know you can put the headphones on and pretend you're part of the band and just jam along and then try these patterns and then start branching out and you could take the patterns but use different notes from the blues scale to get started you know if it's too scary to say oh I'm just gonna make up whatever because that's a really scary thing <laughs> you could say okay let me take the, the rhythm of this and I'll just use the other notes of the blue scale so for example the first one right it's usually <laughs> now i'll play it i'll use the same rhythm but i'll use other notes of the blue scale <laughs> other notes too great way to experiment and same with the others too different notes in the blue scale and then experimenting well let's put this together and get my question question answer on on this <laughs> Right? 
So I'm tapping my computer every so often <laughs> I fall asleep. So you can see, um, yeah, it works. It, it works great. And, and it's really fun to experiment. Um, on the bottom, I gave you a baseline, just in case you don't have a bass player and you have to figure out how to do this. This is one example. There is many. Sounds pretty familiar, right? So the important thing that I also need to point out is to develop your ears and listening to this language, right? So here's a few words that I gave you, but you want to pick out of this language all the things that you like, that you think, oh yeah, I like this pattern or this riff, and then accumulate it so it becomes part of a repertoire so ideally you want to have as big of a repertoire as possible so um so anytime when it comes to that moment the thing is you know when you play with others you have to make things up that second you can't go back and say oh let me go to my sheet and 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 figure out this pattern it has to be part of your dna and something you practiced before so what you do to get ready is you listen to recordings and you go, oh, I heard this really cool pattern. Somebody played it and you go and you're trying it out at the piano and you're putting it in all the different keys and to the different um, to realize is that um, all the repertoire we need to be able to recall in any of those keys when we need it that's that's another thing so important to develop your ear um, let's have fun for a minute I'll just uh, play something I'll use only the first three note of our blue scale C E flat F so I'll play a pattern and see if you can hear it and then you get to play it back. So we'll do a little question and answer thing. So go one, two, one, two, three, four. Then you go. music that's not really part of our training to 
well, I mean, we always should be able to hear things, you know, when when won't get away with <laughs> with not listening, but um it's not as intense a part of our training as it's it's usually in jazz where you really have to listen to each other and you pick out notes, you pick out riffs. It's it's this learning of the language. You have to listen to it, right? Cool. So now that you have all the tools, let me show you how you would usually approach something like this in a, in a jazz setting. Meaning usually you would play the melody and then keep the form and come up with different riffs. So when I do this, see if you can, you could even follow along just playing the shells and always knowing where I am, C7 or F7, or if I'm on a G7. See, so see if you can hear it and I'll show you this format of playing the melody and then it's called taking choruses, meaning you'll play through the form but come up with your own melodies and then play the melody again. But make sure you follow along and, and, and hear, hear the form. One, two, one, two, three, four. which is a great way to get started. Something that's tricky if you're playing by yourself is that nobody's giving you the time and where you are and it's easy to fall in the trap of just dictating your own time. You know, you're getting a little slower because you couldn't follow this chord and then suddenly you miss the beat and nobody cares because you're by yourself. But the moment you get to play with others, that doesn't work. So always either put on a metronome or use a play along track where you have a bass and drums and piano going through the form and holding the chords and practice with that to make sure from the very beginning you have good timing, You've, uh, you hear in the form and every time when you lose it, which is fine and everybody does that all the time, but you can hear, oh, they just went to the G chord to the five chord. Now I know where I am. And that's important too. So it's super fun. You got this to get started. And I'll just take you out on a good other Duke Ellington blues. Um, things ain't what they used to be. 
if you have questions i'm sure there'll be ways find monica hersick.com and send me a notes but things ain't what they used to be <laughs>